I'm so annoyed by this bad hair. I can probably fix it, but I keep playing with it. So, okay, then I'm gonna start getting all of my stuff. Cool. There's a lot of stuff. My oh, over here. oh yeah, so this, is this guy. So it's an immature Cooper's Hawk, and I can tell because of the lines on the tail. So you can see they have the arrow to even kind of make sure you check. And it's got the lines on its tummy, and it's got brown wings and, a line, and lines on its head. Does anybody know what a Cooper's Hawk eats? Uh, These guys are specialists. They catch birds that are flying. So that's why they're kind of small and really maneuverable. They got these good pointed wings because they can zip through the air and snatch a bird right out of the air. So you can see his skull's up on top. And then that's his inside out skin and then his tail sticking out the bottom. And you can see how they've wrapped those wires to kind of create the new legs and stuff. There's three methods, but there's two methods I'm, I know of or I've, been, I've tried for how to get the body out. And it's the top cut or the bottom cut. Top cut literally means I'm going to cut his head off. And so I'll cut, I'll cut through the neck, shrug the skin off over its shoulders like, a, like taking off a hoodie, and then, then dis, uh, detach it from all this bottom stuff. A lot of people, um, when they first see the, the taxidermy stuff, uh, you might hear me mention pretty much every time someone walks up, I say, well, you know everything here is real. Because they, there's that you know, gasp, why are you doing that horrible thing to that animal? because you're surrounded by it, man. And that's, that's weird, that, that disconnect, where this is an object and this is, this is an animal. And they, you know, these objects, you have that intellectual leap, well, yeah, they're, they're about animals, but no, no, that was a real critter. That used to run around and eat things and be whatever. And I think that's important to, to ground people, you know. The trachea exposed, so it's the ridge thing, and then this is just like all the muscle that keeps your neck up, and uh, kind of in there is his esophagus. It's, it's mushier than the trachea. The trachea has the rings to keep it open. So, but what I want to do is get all the way around the other side of all this neck meat. So as I go, I'm also going to cut off the limbs. So when I get to the a good joint on the wing, I'm going to take the wing off. And then I'll go back later and do all the precision work to get the, the rest of the meat out of the wing, things like that. But the goal is to get this big, heavy body out. All this deep red is blood that's just like loose in the muscles or loose in the body cavity. So like this healthy stuff is, is pink like we imagine meat, but this goo is kind of weird. So I'm assuming that's an evidence of whatever took this bird out. So I don't want that blood, you can already see I've got a little bit on some feathers. I don't want that everywhere because I don't have to clean it up. So I have uh, the sawdust. And so now it's going to be less pretty on this side. But I literally do that. And the sawdust will mop up the blood and just contain it. And then later if, if the bloody sawdust is on a feather, I just brush it off. I've had kids be like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in a museum. And I'm like, I know, right? And But it's a beautiful moment. You know, so you can see I'm really, you know, there's my, there's my body chunk that I want to get out. This is trash, there's no further science I can probably get out of it. I just have to get it out of my skin. And it is progressing actually very nicely. My next big challenge is to get over the knees. Beaks are for eating with. Falcons being the famous exception where they, they do kill their prey with their beak. 
but hawks and stuff, beaks are for eating, feet are for killing. So the hawks have these ridiculously big, strong legs because it's how they ply their trade. So I have to get all the meat out because obviously it's just going to go bad, you know. And so I replace all that with this cotton. There's his neck, and these are its shoulders. And so the wings are still inside the skin. Oh, you poked in there. Yeah, cut right through. Oh, <laughs> <guys are nice. laughs> Dang. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just hard to get out. You know, I'll go through. I'm gonna get the, all the head stuff out later. Oh you know. man, I'm glad I'll be gone. <laughs> Science. <laughs> oh. But yeah, like think about this stuff when, especially if you go into the dioramas, you see those bigger critters, all done the exactly the same way. Really? Someone had to skin it, and you put it on some sort of fake body. Like you see the the yellow thing in the corner there? That's right. a fox. So you get a fox skin and put it over that, so it gets back in the shape. Because otherwise, obviously, it's all. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> that was dope. So you put things inside of it that are full of air, that allow transfer of moisture, things like that, and you keep it in a museum where you have a climate that's controlled. Yeah, controlled, not hot or right. whatever. Right. Um, that's and pretty cool. I have no idea that there really is just continents. end right here. Um, legs are up here. This is the back. And now this is the big muscles that are starting to control the tail. I have to leave a lot of meat attached to the skin back down here um, simply because if I lose too much the tail feathers just fall off. So I have to cut through this entire area. So this is the, the muscles that control the, um, the tail and the bottom of the vent. So this is a Cooper's Hawk. You might see these around here. Cool. <laughs>